Hey everybody, this is MoBaller12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst. For this video, I'll be discussing chiral centers. Essentially, I'll be discussing how to identify chiral centers. So, as you can see on the board, I have this structure drawn. And it's a very generic structure to kind of illustrate my point. And as you can see, we have an X here, which will be our central atom. And then we have, essentially, these different groups of things surrounding X. So, A, B, C, and D. So what do all these things mean? Well, the X represents a carbon atom, okay? And the A, B, and C, and D all represent four different groups around the X, which is around the carbon atom. So that translates to, in order for there to be a chiral center in a certain structure, or if you're trying to identify a chiral center in a structure, um, you need to find four different groups around a carbon atom. Okay, that's what it translates to, okay? And that is considered a chiral center. So let's do some examples. I think the best way you understand this and how to identify chiral centers is through examples. So here is an example of where you have to identify whether or not this carbon atom here is a chiral center. So let's go through the process again. You have to remember that chiral centers are based off of having four different groups around a, around a carbon atom. So if we're looking at this carbon here, excuse me, if we're looking at this carbon atom here, we notice that we have a total of three different groups so it does not satisfy that requirement of having four different groups the three different groups we see is the chlorine atom the CH3 group and the H the problem is we have another H so that those are two of the same thing so a total of three different groups okay so this right here not a chiral center okay so let's do another example. So here is our next example, okay? And I want to identify whether or not this specific carbon atom is considered a chiral center. So again, the requirement is to have four different groups around the carbon atom. So we're so as you can see clearly there are there are four different groups. We have a chlorine group, we have a CH3 group, we have a bromine, and we have a hydrogen. All are different. So we have four different groups. So this, in fact, is a chiral center, okay? Let's do one final. I think, actually, let's do two more examples and then we'll call it a day, okay? So here is our second to the last problem, okay? And we are trying to determine whether or not this atom right here is a chiral center. So I'm going to show you the way many people are going to approach this problem and it is incorrect, okay? And then I'll show you the correct way of doing it. They're going to look at this and say, well, we're trying to determine whether this is a chiral center or not. So let's look at things around it. We have a chlorine, we have a bromine, we have, okay, this is skeletal structures. You guys should be familiar with this. Uh, we have a chlorine, bromine, we have a carbon and a carbon. So two carbons, they're the same thing, so not chiral. That is incorrect, okay? If you go back to the beginning of the video, I said, I did not say we want four different atoms surrounding a specific center. We want four different groups. That's the key thing. That's the thing that a lot of people miss out, that little piece of information. We want four different groups, okay? So, with that in mind, the proper way of approaching this problem is as such. We have a chlorine group here. We have a bromine group here. We're going to look at the group surrounding this atom right here, so it's going to be this whole thing here that is one group itself here's our second our fourth group basically so we have an ethyl group this is a one two carbon chain which is going to result in a ethyl group and we have our methyl group which are different from one another so clearly this is not the same as this one so essentially we have four different groups surrounding this center right here therefore making it a chiral center okay so this in fact is a chiral center okay let's move on to our final example so here is our final structure it's a structure of testosterone testosterone is a you know just a little bit of information about it um, is a hormone released in males and also there's a small amount of it found in females and its major function you know is to help with the development of reproductive organs specifically in males and it has some other functions as well as well as helping uh, with the maturation and development of bones and muscles and things of that uh, nature. So again, that's a basic idea of what testosterone 
testosterone does in the human body. Um, so again, here is the the organic structure, the organic molecule, uh, which represents testosterone. And essentially, what we want to do is uh, identify all the chiral centers. So this is like your final test. Okay. So let's go ahead. Oh, so before I continue, the best thing for you guys to do is pause the video and try attempting this problem on your own, and then you know seeing what compare your answer to my answer. Okay. So. I'm going to go throughout this structure and, you know, identify this is a chiral center, this is not a chiral center, so on and so forth, okay? So we're going to start off from this end right here, where you have the double bonded oxygen, the carbonyl, okay? So obviously we need to look for four different groups and surrounding a carbon atom, okay? So starting off with this guy here, this carbon atom, this is not a chiral center, so I'm going to try to go through this at a pretty good steady pace, okay? Not too slow, not too fast, but a good... Uh, steady pace. So again, going back to the structure and identifying chiral centers. This is not a chiral center. The reason why is because we have three groups around it. Okay. Moving along this way, clockwise. So I'm going to put a X where it's there is not a chiral center and a circle where there is a chiral center. So again, this is not a chiral center. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, this is not a chiral center. Okay. Reason why is because we have two H's present. Okay, so this board is going to get really messy by the end, okay? We have two H's present, okay? This is not a chiral center. The same reason as this one here, so I'm not going to draw the H's. There are two H's present here, so they're not different. Now, on the other hand, this is a chiral center. Reason why is because we have this CH3 group here. We have this whole group here, okay? We can think of this whole thing on the bottom as a group. We have, connect to this bond, this whole group on this side, and we have the rest of this group hanging off it from the left side. So that is a chiral center, and that is the way you want to look at it and approach it, okay? You don't want to say, well, we have a carbon and a carbon, not a chiral center. You want to look at the groups surrounding it. So obviously, this side of the board is different from that side of the board, so therefore, those are two different groups. Obviously, the bottom half is different from the top half, so that, those are two different groups. So that, in fact, is a chiral center, okay? This carbon right here is not a chiral center because it has three H's surrounding it. Let me finish the rest of this ring right here. This is not a chiral center because there's only three things around it, okay? Um, again, we have only one H present here, so those are three things around it, so not a chiral center. Um, same thing here, not a chiral center, we only have three groups. Um, not a chiral center because we have, same reason as up here, we have two H's present. Not a chiral center because same reason, two H's present. Um, here, in this position, that is a chiral center. And we're going to use the same reasoning as we did over here. Okay, we have this side of the board with this thing over here, that's one group. There is an H present here, okay? There is an H. So we have an H, we have this carbon group to the right side, which is different from the carbon group to the left side, and then which is different from the carbon group beneath it. So that is a chiral center, okay? This is a chiral center as well. Same reason, we have an H present here, okay? Um, this side of the board on the right side is different from the top side right here, okay? Which is different from the left side, and we have that H. So that's the way you want to approach it, okay? Um, let's see. Um, this is not a chiral center. Again, we have uh, we, again we have two H's. This is not a chiral center. Two H's again present there, so they're not different. We need four different groups. We have essentially um, three different groups in this position and in this position here. Uh, this is a chiral center. Again, for the same reason as you're going to use the same reasoning as we did in the other cases. Again, there's an H present here. This H is clearly different from the thing above it. Okay, which is clearly different from the thing to the right of it, which is clearly different from all this thing on the left of it. So, four different groups, so therefore chiral center. Not a chiral center, not a chiral center, so you guys should be able to determine why, the reasoning why. Um, chiral center, same reasoning, we have a CH3 up top, we have all the stuff with the OH to the right, which is different from to the left because we have no OH, and when, then we have a double bonded O all the way in the bottom. We don't have a double bond at all anywhere here. So it's clearly different. You can tell the difference. There's no symmetry. There's 
differences in the structure this side is extremely small compared to this side so they're two different groups this is a small group compared to this big structure on the left side so clearly two different groups and again we have this bottom group here which is different from the rest of the structure as well so a chiral center um, this is not going to be a chiral center same reason it has three H's present there and the final chiral center we have is this one right here and it's because we have an OH there's an H present here we have an H and an OH which is clearly different we have this side of the structure which is clearly different from all of this side of the structure so essentially to conclude the determination of the chiral centers in this structure of testosterone we have a total of six chiral centers and again the reasoning is as I had explained it you know we don't either we didn't have um, four groups or we had groups that were the same such as these examples here so there you have it there's a brief little explanation on how to determine chiral centers hopefully that helped you guys hopefully you can answer you guys homeworks now and be able to ace your guys next exam and quizzes so all the best this is Mo Baller signing out until next time hopefully you guys will stay tuned